sometimes we'll have the need to multiply two vectors together. And actually there's two ways to do that. And we're going to look at the first way here. Well, I call this way the scalar product, or what we call the dot product. Um, and it's one of the two major ways of multiplying two vectors together. And the interesting thing about this is when we take two vectors, say a vector a and a vector b, and multiply them together using the dot product, or the scalar product, we get a scalar result. So two vectors multiplying together using the dot product become a scalar. There's no direction associated with it at the end. And you may wonder why we wanted to do this. Well, there's a couple examples in physics that we'll find. And the first probably one, the first one you'll probably see is the how we use forces and displacement to give us work. So part of energy. Well, when we do these two dot products together, kind of a general way to think of the dot product is it's really a measure of how parallel two vectors are to each other. The more parallel the larger the number. The, the less parallel or the more perpendicular, the smaller the dot product. So let's go ahead and look and see what actually is the dot product and how we calculate it. So we have a vector A. It's got some x, y, and maybe z components. We have vector B that has, again, some x, y, and z components. And in these, it doesn't matter which way I do it, but there's always going to be some angle between it. They may not be in this case where I've drawn everything in an xy plane, it could be xyz, but there's always going to be one angle between them. So if we go through and calculate it, there's a little bit of a shortcut that we can use uh, to, to figure this out. And as you've seen a couple times, we normally give vectors in terms of a magnitude and a direction. So if we do the dot product, and you'll see the name dot product comes from the little dot that we use, a dotted into b, or the dot product of a and b, is equal to the magnitude of a times the magnitude of b, just two scalar quantities, times the cosine of the angle between the two. So if it's 45 degrees, it's a cosine of 45 degrees. This can give us um, a lot of information. Sometimes it's not exactly enough to uh, get us the right answer right away. Or might, there might be actually an easier thing that we can uh, calculate. If we know the x, y, and z components, we can figure out what the cross product is. This value right here is actually exactly equal to this next guy. And all we have to do is figure out what the x component of our first vector is, what the x component of our second vector is, multiply them together, and add it to the multiplication of the y components, plus a multiplication of the z components. And all of these are magnitudes. There's no direction associated with it, but we do have to deal with the components. So two different forms that give us exactly the same answer, but they are used in different, different um, uh, ways, and different um, problems are easier to solve using one or the other. And the result is a scalar. It's always something you want to remember is that the result is a scalar. You don't, uh, we lose the the vector part of it. We lose the direction once we do a dot product. There's a couple examples that we can run through, just some very classic one. Well, if A and B are exactly in the same direction, our angle then turns to zero degrees, and the cosine of zero degrees is one. So the dot product of AB, if A and B are pointing exactly in the same direction, is going to be just a multiplication of the magnitude times the cosine of, of uh, zero, or just by multiplying by one. Similar, uh, we can do A dotted into B where they're exactly opposite of each other. They're 180 degrees. So if we look back at our equation here, A dotted into B gives us the um, A, the magnitude of A times the magnitude of B times the cosine of 180 degrees, and the cosine of 180 degrees is negative 1. And we could do these the other way. So if we look at this first guy up here, A is just in the x direction, B is just in the x direction, there's no y components and there's no z components, so we just get the same result. Same thing for this one, A and B, A is in the positive x, B is in the negative x, so we get this minus sign and we get the magnitude of each of these components. So these are really just absolute values. 
And last but not least, we said that the dot product measures how parallel they are. So if A is in the Y and B is in the X, well, there's no Y component or no uh, X component of our A and no Y component of our B. So we have a zero here, a zero here, and two zeros here. So this better give us the answer of zero. So pretty easy to, uh, to go through everything. It just measures how parallel they are. Uh, this is actually the easier of the two. But again, it is a useful tool that we need. And since we're dealing with vectors, we have to redefine what does it mean to multiply two vectors together.